do I need to know about? Not today. Okay. All right, and then uh, when we when we're flying along, do you see uh, power lines or trees or anything? Um, most likely I see them, but go ahead and let me know. More eyes are better on that one. And uh, yeah, so feel free to let me know those things if you okay. see them, okay? I think it's on. Now it's on. Mine's on. Sweet. <laughs> okay. All right. One last check here. All right. He's still on the ground. The other one's up there. Yeah. You can grab this with two water still. You got yes, thank you. But I, I, I got halfway there. That's right. <laughs> They're at least a visual reminder, right? <laughs> right, that was my thinking. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Hi. I'm ready when you are. Okay. We'll go ahead and come on in there. Finally remember that step. Just give me a, a chuck above me, make sure I'm good. I do see uh, Dave over there, but if there's anything else, airplanes, anything like that, let me know if I got a clear sky above me. This is the new one next door here? Yep. Brand new. Brand new. I know he's probably got 10 hours on it. They lost the contract. A new CEO came in oh, and really? said, what is this line item? Thanks guys, we'll see you soon. I think I'm going to stay a little bit lower just for a moment, although here we go. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to level out here in just a second. Yeah. Oh, shit. Come on. I did not stop at the top. That's okay. I mean, it's obviously part of our routine that we do, but at this point, make sure that you get control of the balloon first, because if you set it right now, yeah, I'm not about to set, set it, it right. Pretty good descent. So... Okay. <laughs> David's got that north track. So, in terms of should you be concerned about it, what you can do is you can look at the top and see what I would call the overlap or that lens piece. Yeah. Is it is it setting up against the balloon? And the answer is yes, it is. And so, in that sense, uh, I think it's just fine, okay. and you don't have to worry too much about it. Now, one of the things I am looking at though is is that rope heavy enough? That it's actually pulling. It doesn't feel like there's any tension on it, so. Once we get a, when we do, when we do some venting, we'll see how that rope feels. Go ahead and uh, contact with tap. Uh, okay. It means you're descending a little bit. Thank you. Thank 
Springs Tower, hot air balloon 74008, second of three in the field to your west. Hot air 74008, Springs Tower, right Well, I don't want to be going this direction really, so I'm going to go ahead and bring us up a little bit and see okay. if we can't get some of that north wind. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because you're right, this direction is fine for now, but right. uh, not right. for very long. Okay, so what were you saying about them losing this contract? Ah, yes. Uh, a new CEO came in and saw the cost of all that and uh -huh. was like, no. And so my understanding is that they're buying out the contract, whatever that means. I guess paying in full or something. Okay. This doesn't even make sense to me. If you're going to pay it out, why not keep flying it? But, right. um, they're not sure what they're going to do with the balloon. Like They don't want the balloon anymore. The, the storks guys. Don't. Right. Yeah, I wonder how that deposit on it was thirty nine thousand, so I wonder how the contract reads in terms of who owns the balloon now. Yeah, that's what we were wondering too. Um, I told them I'd give them five grand for it. Yeah. So. That seems fair. That's a one oh five, isn't it? Exactly right. I mean, it's a Kubitschek, but that's fine. That's oh, yeah. way heavy for me, but it's okay. Kubitschek baskets are heavy. It's got uh, two, I think they're 23 or 24 gallons, somewhere in there. Okay. The basket's too big for it, personally. Is it? That's my opinion. It also has that door, and I'm just not really a fan. I get it, and if I was doing like accessibility stuff, sure. Left traffic but in terms of like needing that door, that's just that much more weight. Yeah, that's kind of my view too. It's it's more weight, it's more moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it affects the integrity in person, you know. I feel like the basket's not as tight and square right. as it could be. at both the Cameron and the Kubitschek doors and they're they're plenty sturdy I, mean, I don't worry about the safety of it right um, but yeah you bang them around on enough landings and you ride them in the truck and over, here. over 400 feet or 400 hours or something right. Right. That, it could wear I don't know it just feels um, it just feels to me like it's like I can twist it, you know, okay, uh -huh. and it gives a little bit right there. It's not as solid okay. as it would be if it was a solid piece. Right. I mean, it's not going to come apart. Right. No way. But it just doesn't. I don't know. put a door in a camera and you have to have a solid floor. That makes sense. Um, so that's sort of a trade-off. Is I really like the woven floor personally. Me too. Me too. Um, but you can't get a woven floor and a door. So. Terry came over, he was showing me that the Air Force Academy had updated their, uh, <coughs> their weather on the hour. <coughs> and it was reporting 200 at 12. Okay. And that's surprising to me. So, um, looks like David's got something like a 200 up there. Um, just something to 
kind of keep your eyes out with the with the Air Force Academy sort of being squirrely this morning. Right. Everything down here seems fine. The pie ball was super stable. Right. But just sort of. Back of my mind as hmm, maybe maybe things are going to deteriorate today. Seven nine, you look pop runway three five. Gotcha. Okay, so it's been two weeks, three weeks since we flew, right? Three weeks today, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. So did, have you noticed any difference this morning after that delay? Um, not a whole lot, but okay. it helps that I get out with the adventures too. Right. Though, so as far as that goes. You're still in the right brain space. Right. Um, but I mean, I, I get what you're saying. Certainly I was checking my list a little bit more. Okay. Um, both in terms of just the habit and also, you know, making sure, you know, it has been three weeks and don't want to miss anything. Um, you know, kind of went through it a little bit more last night than, say, the last time. Okay. You know, from that Saturday to Sunday, that, you know, that getting, we flew Saturday and Sunday. So Saturday night, I was like, yeah, this is right. I got all these things. Right. And quick, brief look, look at it. Today I studied a little bit more, okay. if that makes sense. Yep. But I don't feel rusty per se. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Keep hitting this up a little bit. Okay. Slow it down. So let's talk about some sort of emergency procedures. Yes. Now we're going to basically just talk through them. Two right hitting zero eight zero. Primarily because most of them are really not safe to simulate, and some of them are actually quite difficult to simulate. Um, and so, there's largely there are three or four different kind of emergencies. you want to be prepared for um, and the way I would characterize it is you've got a fuel problem typically fuel leak is an emergency um, and you also could potentially have something like a medical emergency either yourself or a passenger and then the, the third type of emergency is really it's, it's usually not what I would call an emergency, but things like, you know, when you're landing, things come up, you hit an obstacle, you know, those sorts of things, um, which can create an emergency out of it, sort of like hitting power lines, hitting a fence, that sort of a thing. Um, in terms of preparation, I like to be prepared to handle fuel leaks and fire. In fairness, I have now, I'm, I'm right around a thousand pilot hours, and I have had two fuel leaks in my career, um, and they were both extremely minor, and it wasn't a big deal. Um, part of the reason for that is I tend to fly really good equipment, and we maintain our equipment, right. and we do that pre-flight. I have had times in the pre-flight where I just something's not seating correctly. Well, you know, you can futz with it on the ground. It's going to be good. But I've only had two fuel leaks uh, in the air. Um, While well, it's possible for any part of the system to leak, the most likely points are um, either at the tank valve hose fitting, you know, somewhere right here, or your blast valve. Okay. Um, now most likely, especially with this system, 
when you're not since you're not changing hoses and these regal fittings if you've done your pre-flight and it's not leaking it's not gonna leak right um, typically if a if that regal fitting leaks it's because you can't get it seated but once it's seated they just don't leak um, However, what can leak is the actual valve stem itself. Um, so basically, if you, if you visualize, that screw just goes into uh, the brass stem, and that, that stem is notched so that the handle is, um, you know, twisting sure. the stem. The screw is not what you're, what you're twisting against, it's just holding the handle on the top. Right. Um, so, typically, if that valve stem leaks, you'll start to smell, hear, um, or see propane coming out right under the handle. Right. Um, I think crossed it up. Right. Like that. Mm -hmm. And it's important to respond to that fairly quickly. Maybe we'll contact ground because if it I does leak long enough, money. you can freeze the valve to the point you can't get it closed. Um, the other tricky part is. It might leak open, and it might leak closed. So, if it leaks open, the solution is close it. And you want to do that fairly quickly, like within a few minutes. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not super urgent, like seconds. Um, but you just have that cold vapor long enough, and it'll freeze the valve. And then if you close it, and the leak goes away, then you're fine. Yankee uniform, runway 35 left. If it leaks open, that's a more significant problem. If it leaks when it's open, generally what I would argue is, assuming you're in a relatively decent area like this, uh, you consider your flight to be over. It's not worth panicking like dive bomb to the ground and put it in a shitty place. That's not worth it. Um, but things like, okay, that's a little leak. It's not safe to keep flying. I'm going to go ahead and land and just land and be done. Sure. Um, if it leaks when it's open and you can close it, then you can keep flying. You got to remember though that that fuel's no no longer accessible. Right. So. Yeah. Or you're to Does it look like smoke to you? It's sort of got that blue tint to it. It does have a blue tint to it. I wonder what's going on. Okay, so that's your leak in the tank. Typically, the way you discover that is you'll hear it. Um, and, it, you know, you'll just hear that little hiss kind of a thing. Now, in fairness, that kind of a leak's not very common. Even in, I mean, leaks in general are not common, but of all of the leaks, that's going to be less common. You're much more likely to have a leak up here at the blast valve. I'm moving hard, constantly moving Exactly, because you're, you're moving it, and now you've got, you've got O-rings in there that are always under this friction. Right. Um, especially when we change temperatures so much. Um, sure. Cold temperatures are bad for O-rings, and just the heating and cooling and heating and cooling makes it tough on them. Um, so even though we change them out at annual, you still could potentially have a problem in, in between. Um, and if you visualize the way this blast valve works, fuel's coming in here, and then it's coming out here and going up into the burner. So right now, what's happening is this stem is basically pushed all the way up and blocking the flow. And then when you open this, it pulls the stem down and fuel flows across. So I'm noticing some condensation. Mm -hmm. Is that just 
from the cold air or it's, why is that frosting? It is because today is a relatively humid day for humid, us. Right. Um, and it's the fact that cold fuel just sits here at this, at this gate. <laughs> So it's relatively common that you see that um, because the, since sense. the fuel doesn't flow through there, right. it never actually changes that, but it just sort of, as, as you open it, fuel just sort of, uh, if you imagine sort of spinning around the base of the gauge, because sure. it's pushing up against a spring. Uh, so it's Um, so the way that this works is that there is basically an o-ring on the top uh, that is preventing fuel from going over the stem and then there's an o-ring at the bottom that's preventing fuel from coming out into your hand either one of those o-rings could fail typically they don't fail catastrophically they just leak a little bit um, the most common scenario that I have seen is that it leaks when you activate it. So it, it would be sealed now, and when you open it, you figure out that your glove is, right. is freezing. Cold, right. um, five two, contact departure. It is possible five, five, five. that it would be leaking when it's closed, but that's less common, uh, just based on the position of the O-rings sure. and how the friction sits and things like that. It's also, in theory, possible that it would leak both open and closed, but that's really, that's that really rare. That would mean that both uh, O-rings are bad? Yes. If it does it in both? And it would have failed at the same time, and that's really unlikely. Right. Um, it's possible, typically when that happens though, it's due to debris in the fuel. That you've come and you've scoured them. You know, you've got some piece of sand in there and you've got... Yeah, well, it just drops the line on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> But it's interesting that wouldn't contaminate your fuel because you'd get fuel, you'd get sand in the threads right. and it would make it sort of hard to get onto the right. fitting. Right. But the fuel only goes through basically that, that nipple that's right in the right. middle. So, right. you know, it's, it's pretty hard to get sand into the, into the fuel system by dropping it on the ground. Mm -hmm. Typically it's the fact that you're fueling somewhere that has dirty fuel. Gotcha. You don't have to worry too much about it. Um, people have complained about that when they've gone to some of these Mexico events. When I go to Mexico, I've never had an issue, but they do sell a fuel filter that you put on your fueling adapter. Oh, yeah. that, that looks attractive. Um, I don't have it simply because it's expensive, right. but it's, right. I think it's a good idea in principle. Um, so, if you discover that this thing is leaking, if it's leaking closed, what would you do? If it's leaking closed... Right, you just look up right here and there's right. vapor coming out, out of it. Uh, turning that line off, I imagine, would be... Okay. Turning that side off. Turn to the takeoff, yep. Right. Um, switching to the other side, obviously. Right. What else would I be doing besides turning it off if it's leaking closed and leaving it? Or open it? No? Um, yes, actually, you'd, there's a couple of things to do. The answer is yes, turn off the tank. Right. Which you know you can do safely because you've got another tank and another burner. Right. But you can turn off the tank and then it's important to burn out all the fuel. So then you're taking all the pressure off of it, right. rather than letting it leak because you've got because some, you, got, yeah, you know, whatever, yeah. half a gallon of fuel there, right? right. Um, so that way you burn it out and that way the, the leak is stopped. Right. <clears throat> Close it off and empty it. Right. And it's effectively the same approach if it leaks when it's open because, you know, you every time you burn you're creating fuel you're putting fuel out here at just the same time you got fire 
that's a dangerous combination. And that's how you start to get a, a blast valve fire. Again, very rare, because the fuel, if it's leaking slowly, right. is gonna naturally descend, right. and your fire's all going up. Right. But that's not a big gap. <laughs> um, so, yeah, absolutely, turn off the tank, burn it out, and then switch to the other side. Now, we get spoiled with flying these, these systems with multiple burners and multiple tank systems. That redundancy is so nice, and it's a great safety feature. However, that may not always be the case. You might not have that in whatever system. Right. Or you might be in a situation where you know, maybe you managed your fuel, maybe deliberately, maybe by mistake, that now I only have fuel in the leaking side, you oh, know? Yeah. Whereas let's say these tanks are empty, sure. and now you, it's like, well, what do I do over here? There's a couple of approaches. In the Cameron, you can get frustrated that the hoses are too long and you gotta sort of deal with it, but it's, it's designed that way so that any hose will go to any tank. Right. And so then you just unzip your cover and run your hose to the tank that has fuel on the burner that doesn't leak. Makes sense. Um, and again, that's... That might feel pretty urgent because if you discover this leak, it's probably because you wanted to burn, you're in flight, and so now you've got to do this thing that only takes a couple of minutes, but more often you know you burn more often than that right so then you've got to calculate the risk of can i burn with it leaking in order to stabilize the aircraft right. and in general the answer is yes um, especially if you've got the attitude of shutting the tank down and burning it out you got some heat out of that right um, but i might i might actually open it and lock it open get me some good heat some good climb if i can afford that right um, and then buys you time because what you don't want to do is be messing around with your fuel system and realize that now you're in a 600 foot descent and you don't have enough space to, to survive that you know there will come a time in our training where we do a terminal velocity descent. yeah it looks like we're just kind of hanging here still aren't we so you're going to climb up to their level and I've, that's my thought okay um so the purpose of the of the terminal velocity descent is to simulate that type of a scenario where i have no longer i can't burn for some period of time like my burner went out my pilot light went out i have a leak i've got to solve that and you've got to know how the balloon behaves in that steep descent in this balloon I would anticipate any faster than about 800 feet a minute and it will start to feel unstable it will start to behave awkwardly um, and um, typically you know they'll shake they'll lean they'll rock they'll spin those sorts of things which can be quite disconcerting especially if you've never done it before and you're also dealing with a fuel emergency. So that's why we simulate that. Right. Um, the other thing that we do with the terminal velocity descent is we also see, you know, we'll do it with a burner that's fit, of course, but... I was gonna say, at what point does the pilot light start getting blown out? Um, with this burner, it would be, it would be pretty difficult to do. Uh, it is possible that that would happen. Um, just when you get enough wind rushing up around the basket, it could blow it out. Um, but I have gone through some pretty major shears with this burner and it's... You're more likely to get that, get it blowing out in a shear than in, in a descent. But it is, it is theoretically possible. You know, maybe you've got a strong descent and then you descend through a shear and... Sure. But 
the other advantage of doing that terminal velocity uh, descent is we'll actually pay real close attention to our altitude and say, okay, again, simulating an emergency, we'll, we'll let it descend to a number. We'll still be plenty high, so we're not worried about it. And then it'll be like, okay, let's just recover as fast as we can. And let's see how much, how much distance did we lose in right. that. Because that'll get you a feel for, okay, in these conditions, I was able to recover in X hundred feet. like Terry is going away from us. Mm -hmm. Not super fast, but I'll be curious to see what David does as he descends here. So by and large, it, it sounds like it's trite, but basically the deal is when you have a fuel leak, we have so much redundancy, shut, out, shut down that side to, to eliminate the fuel, burn out the pressure, and then switch to the other side. And then that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Right. Um, it is possible that you'll find yourself in a system that doesn't have this level of redundancy at some point in your life, um, <clears throat> at which point there is a technique, and we're actually going to try this now, called flying off the tank. And so basically what that simulates is if your blast valve is leaking when it's really in either position, but largely when it's closed, then what you can do is you can lock the blast valve open and close the tank and then just toggle the tank valve. Right. Now, of course, when you have the quick shut off 90 degree valves, that's quick and easy. Mm -hmm. With these, it's a little bit of a different deal. So, um, which tank are you on over here? Uh, this one, okay. So. Okay, so let's test this side. Let's make sure that we've got good fire on this side of the fuel system. Okay, so now go ahead and shut down that tank. and then burn that out. Okay, and then what you wanna do is go ahead and lock that blast valve open. Yep, and then, yep. Notice your delays. There's not very much delay in starting the burn. No, but it, it goes for a few seconds after I shut it. Just right. Because it's got to burn out the line. Right. So that's important to note, especially if you're trying to execute a landing on that. Right. That, you know, what you don't want to do, you know how we've got the routine of when you're touching the ground, you get your hand off the burner. Well, you've got to now shut that off a couple of seconds early so that you don't have fire and then you tip it in and all that kind of stuff. I feel like that too, but boy is it slow, mm -hmm. it? None, none of the crews have left the field, so... I'm gonna go back to the normal. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the back to the side. Okay. And then I'm gonna start burning off the other side. Okay. So I'm gonna try to tank over there. Okay, so quick recap. Fuel leaks are going to be your most common issue 
could could leak at the tank valve. It is very unlikely, but it's possible that it leaks when it's closed. <clears throat> if it is, then you just gotta land. And unfortunately, the only way to really address that is to drain the tank. Which, like if it were leaking closed and it was this empty, um, I would keep an eye on it and I would actually keep burning that tank out just to try and drain it more quickly. Right. Or after you land, you burn it out, but you gotta be really careful that you're not mixing fuel and fire, obviously. Uh, blast valve leaks are much more common uh, and I've had two in 30 years. So they're pretty rare. It's good to know. Yeah. The, my first one, I had a blast valve leak on my first flight after my check -in. Private check, private uh, certificate. I flew the next day, and I was with Cheryl Getch, and we were over the uh, Petroglyph Park in on the West Mesa in Albuquerque. And uh, I was flying an old Raven, you know, single blast valve, none of this right, dual stuff, stuff, right? right? And uh, and uh, and I'm I'm just kind of hanging on it like this, and my glove freezes. Like that's and I look up and it's leaking. And so then, but it's super slow day, and I'm over the petroglyph, so I can't land. I mean, it's a national park. And, uh, and so I flew off the tank for the next 20 minutes, um, in order to get you know to the to the next road, and uh, and then landed. And and someone asked, oh hey, are you gonna fly again? And I said. No. Said, no, you know, about halfway through the flight, had a fuel leak, and I can't, I can't get it fixed. Cheryl's like, "What? You didn't tell me that?" It's like, "Well, I didn't really want you to panic." Uh, so, still, yeah, it's on the pack now. Like I say, nowadays I feel spoiled with all these redundancies and really nice equipment and I think fuel systems and burners have, have been the most notable development uh, in balloons and and we don't see a lot probably even in the last 20 years uh, but like this burner here this mark IV, it was a major revolution the idea of now you got all the redundancy but you don't have all the weight of a double burner um, it was, I mean, it was a game changer. We're almost back over the field. I know. <laughs> I feel like we're going sort of south yes. east. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, very slow. Um, Terry looks like still, he's gotten to the other side of the airport. Right. And we're still um, well below our got the dilemma though if we climb and we get that we yeah, really we probably have to want to hang over there exactly do we commit to going over the airport or do we just get over sort of like over the, the ace hardware building and drop back and come back in Have any objection? Mm -hmm. I would like to keep going up some more. I mean, okay. 
I just want to see what's up there. And if I'm being really honest, I, I haven't been high in a balloon in a long time. Right. Yeah, it suits me just fine. I mean, I think that today we're flying. It's a cool enough day. We don't have any concerns about temperature. Just looking, I realize we don't have a... Yeah, it was on. there when we started. Uh, yeah. Everyone went 3-1 at bubble 5. Everything else here by November. So that's ambient temperature. It's just recorded on, right? It's received. Oh, received. So it should be receiving, that's what you're saying? Right. And so now it's looking right. for the turtle. In theory, it's going to find it, and then... Well, then what was I reading when I was not turning that on? My guess is you were reading that ambient temperature, which oh. is a sensor in here, which gotcha. as soon as it sits in the sun a little bit, they're not ready. I see. Okay, so now I feel like we've got some movement. I'm looking at Terry here, and he's descending. Coming back, but I don't think he made it across the airport. Like he's, that implies that he never found anything fast enough. There hasn't been a lot of airport traffic today, but I think my inclination is that maybe we could get to whatever this. And then drop down and see if we can sleep out. That way we're not stuck out in the middle of the He's definitely got a west. I think he does. It might be an optical illusion because we're moving. There's east. some of that, but he was definitely, I mean, I feel like he's on the other side of powers again. I, I on think the west that side too. of powers. I feel like Terry has definitely come back at us. You'll find November, turn right 80, 080. Zero, zero. Zero, zero, five number. Yeah, so all those C5 sitting right there. Uh -huh. Came over the house last night in formation. Oh, really? That oh, was awesome. I stepped out for my last cigarette of the night. All real low formation. It was awesome. Okay, we got to about 9,300 feet there. Mm -hmm. That's important to note, and we'll log that in the logbook. Because there is a requirement that you, I, it's, I think it's a meaningless requirement, but there is a requirement that you have a flight over 2,000 feet. What's funny is the requirement says a controlled ascent to 2,000 feet above the ground. That's it. I'm more interested in the controlled descent. Right. <laughs> And that's not a requirement? No, it's not listed at all. Yeah, my attitude is any monkey can do an ascent. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, I know. That's always been funny to me. So it looks to me like David has got a nice to the west, so that's good. I feel like he landed right up in that field the last time he flew. Oh really? Yeah. And we were that was that day we were heading that way? Uh-huh. Yeah. We were down there. Where did he land? Was, oh was that yeah you're right. It was that right corner there, field. That corner. Right. <laughs> Currently descending about 500 feet a minute. This is great. Um, it looked to me like we got up to about 600-ish on our way down. But did you notice how stable the balloon is at that speed? Yes. I mean, you can barely tell that it's going down if you're not paying attention. Yes. Which is a little disconcerting, right? It's, a little. 
you know. And but that's how that's how. Why is that happening? That's how people get behind it. Sure. It happens in no time at all, especially if you're distracted with something. You know, you're distracted talking on the radio or messing with your phone or solving a fuel leak problem, you know. <laughs> options what are you thinking here well uh, at the very moment I was yeah, thinking that I wanted to know exactly how long it took to stop the descent okay um, which I feel like it's doing that um, you know we haven't been moving very fast at all so Making it out to somewhere today. Right. Um, yeah, you don't have to be looking, scanning a long ways away right. for landing options, that's for sure. Um. Picks. It looks to me, I think, that it's going southwest. So in theory, if we drop down, we would head towards where David is now. Uh, I guess my next plan then would be to this a little bit lower and kind of maintain a, a lower altitude, see which direction it is, and then take another reevaluation as to which which direction. Okay. Um, I mean, it definitely is a bit of an illusion, but I feel like he's actually coming back towards towers now. He might be. It's hard to tell. Let us drop a little bit more here. wind on the ground is going towards the airport there. What's your, what's your strategy? Well then I, I want to get out as far back here, as, as far west as I can if I'm going to be being blown back in the airport. 
and like all nice big accessible fields here. Yep, they are. I know I've landed in this one before. I don't remember whether there's a fence around this one, but I don't think there is. Right. Certainly a lot of tire tracks. Yeah. Even that north progress is quick, like we're... Yeah, I feel like we dropped a little bit below it. And so in this scenario where the ground wind, potentially, I mean, it's gonna be pretty calm, it's hard to tell, but I think you're right, that steam is turning towards the east now. The, the most common error with that is people get down low and they get down low gradually and they'll start to lose all of their space and then you end up in a bad spot. Like in this case, the airport is not an unsafe place to be, sure. but it's undesirable. You're right. And so typically what I'd recommend okay, is, I mean, if you do get this north, that would be great. This, these are fields leading into the general aviation airport for the right key right is that you've got to be ready for that landing. Sure. Um, rather than, you know, gradually easing down mm -hmm. and then you end up, you know, right. right around the runway before you get there. See the sunrise in case. Uh, if you guys can hear us. We're starting to look for a landing, and I'm guessing we cannot get back to the field. I think we're going to be out over uh, this way, probably near the general aviation stuff. Copy that. Alright. I like a bit in the air for close to an hour, so it's not quite, but definitely. Uh, <coughs> start shooting for landings. Yep, I agree. Take it all the way down to the deck, paying attention that there are light poles. I don't see any power on the Then, if you get down to that light pole height, then we can tolerate any direction, right? Too much of a descent. Right. right. We're actually still climbing.
too, you feel it? A little bit, yeah. I don't know if we'll maintain that as we continue our descent or if it'll calm down. <laughs> I anticipate today that the ground is going to be fairly unpredictable. So, that's if we can get down into that sort of light pole level. Yeah, definitely feel wind in my face. Right, so we should be slowing down as we descend. Um, but like I say, we could, we could have a line on a field and then have a shift, and so we want to stay above the, sure. above the hazard. I do feel like we're slowing down, and uh, the steam on the plant there is going a little bit to the east, so we might end up coming back over here. We'll just keep an eye out for it here once. But I think you're, I think you're right. Just keep that slow descent down. And I feel like the temperature's dropped. Definitely Maybe it's just because the, the sun's going behind the cloud. The cooler winds, or the wind is definitely cooler than it felt when we were up higher. down okay. some. Yep, I think that's good. I feel like Dave, Dave there's not going as fast in the same direction as you are. I agree. So looking in our direction of flight, I see a number of flagpoles, trees. This, uh, this flagpole is probably the tallest to see yeah. light poles. Um, I don't see any power lines over this uh, sort of the trailer park here right. uh, or even into this next neighborhood. You know, we're getting a little bit of a left turn. That park might yeah. be attractive to right. us. It looks like David's actually going to the west now, or sorry, to the east. Um, however, I don't think we can predict very much, so. I would, I would just kind of gradually inch it down, and then we can take whatever we stumble upon.
So now looking out here again, we've got trees, we've got light poles, obviously buildings. The light poles around the, the football field are the most significant. Sure. Um, Sunrise to Chase. Uh, sorry about all the circles. We're not real sure what we're going to get on the ground here. Uh, currently, it looks like we're headed towards the east, but uh, uh, I would say don't do anything too fast. serious about their Christmas inflatables, aren't they? <laughs> Dave definitely has. Yeah, and the steam up here does too, so we don't. We're going the opposite of that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let it get down a little bit more. Okay. like David's shooting for landing in that field. I really thought we were just going to go straight into that one. Well, I went back up just a hair and I got this yep. other direction. This has come off the keg. It's down to about 15 here. Okay. <clears throat> Situated again, we'll go ahead and let okay. yeah, Don't let it get ahead of you, though.
so this ground direction seems to be fairly predictable, right? right. At least for the last several minutes. Um, and so tell me a little bit about your landing strategy out here. Well, I feel like we've gotten, getting, we are getting a little bit of uh, north as well, not uh -huh. just pure east. So going this direction, we're going to have to clear these buildings first. Okay, I agree. And, uh, shoot for the little uh, field right after it. Yeah, there's a lot of hazards in this path, right? Because we've got yeah. the, the road, the light poles in the road, the buildings, and, the and then the sports field there has some fences around it and things like that. And then, of course, the taller light poles. Sure. Um, that said, and I don't know if you can see it, but the ops area fence is on the other side of that next. So if we find that we're cruising past these buildings and we like some of the areas between us and the football field, that's great. Um, however, if we don't, then clearing over the football field and then landing between the football field and the ops fence, either side of that road would also be okay. Altitude, where I have to worry about those lights. Given how sort of busy and cluttered it is in here, yeah. what I would recommend is staying right about this height um, with the intent of landing just after the football field. But we've got to stay this high because we don't know exactly where we're going to be left right of the, uh, of the light poles. Does that make sense? Right. Um, and that also means then that once we do have confidence where we are in the light poles, we would end up doing a fairly steep descent into that field. Right. Um, there's a lot of fences, but I do believe we have access there. You know, I'm just seeing there's sure kind of path there. So. Yeah, you can get in right there, I see. Sunrise to chase. Uh, if everything goes to plan, we're hoping to land just right past this football field. Okay, so that was a little bit of an overburn. Yeah. Which we're still fine. I wouldn't bend at this point.
Travis is showing you that he can get access to that field on the other side of the road. Gotcha. Little burn. This is Murphy's Law here. We're going right for, towards the big light post, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so are you thinking this side of the of the road or the other side? The other side where okay. he's at. Uh, obviously there's light holes there in the street. Yep, that's okay. But essentially, I'd like to start this evening. Not yet. As, well, I was going to say as soon as we clear the light. Mm -hmm. It'll cool naturally enough. You don't have to. Okay, so you're in your happy corner, you got the bench in hand, things are looking good. We're getting enough of a turn that it doesn't feel like we're going to get to that light bulb, but I think, right. I think you're doing good at staying up here just a little bit to make sure. Kind of squirrely, it feels like mm -hmm. to me. Go ahead and give it a little burn. There's two light poles. There's, I think we're going to be clear of them both. Mm -hmm. Okay, not much traffic on the road. confident that we're going to clear that light pole so we can just let it ease right in and condense a little bit if you like. <laughs> Tough approach though, right? It was a tough approach. <laughs> Building light poles and Murphy's Law says you always go right yeah, towards them. That's right just the way it works. It looks smooth from here. Were y'all able to hear me talking? I heard you respond a couple times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't B. know which A or B. It doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter? No. Okay. Both on both. I've got it. I've got it set so that it only transmits. Yeah, both change. buttons only transmit to one channel. Okay. So. All right. Um, all right, Travis, let's go ahead and grab this crown here. And, uh, we're rocking around pretty good, so I'd like to go ahead and get the balloon down. I think that makes sense. Uh, yeah, the wings are very down. Yep, very. All over. All over. So, I'm gonna kill the pilot light. Great. Turn off my fuel system here.
light? Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off.
Enjoyed having it on uh, at the end a little bit. Yeah. So let's lift it up and uh it. <laughs> Pretty good. I noticed there were a couple times where I left it running, perhaps accidentally. But then I, you know, caught extra 15 minutes of this part, and I was like, you know what? I'm enjoying that. Oh, yeah. How do we make this happen? Or make that happen? I'm glad they were both up there because I think uh, I started beeping mid-flight, so I don't know if it uh, I started beeping. I think the GoPro beeped. Uh, mine? Uh-huh, I think. 
I got two more batteries if that battery seems to be it, it might be the battery I'm not sure yeah Hey, I really enjoyed my water today, by the way. Yes! That was very nice. <laughs>